quickly tell us which opportunity have you seen that you think is fascinating that you possibly earlier hadn't seen, but there it is right now. And then we will be able to proceed uh, there. Yeah, James says, ah, seen an opportunity for expanding uh, solar power radio cells to parents and, uh, parents and schools going uh, through the lockdown. Yes, uh, people are taking because children are learning over the radio or online. And this is an opportunity which someone has picked up and says it's right out there. Uh, Lucia says, uh, oh, Lucia makes nice sweaters. Yes, Lucia, thanks for throwing the advert in right there uh, with uh, Luc Lunas, Lunas uh, Enterprise, uh, Enterprises of Uganda. Um, yes, that's Koma Ketch. Uh, Millie says, the opportunity I have seen and captured is buying medical equipment at relatively low prices from business colleagues who could not cope with the business. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, the, 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 there you have it. Uh, the crisis treats people differently. Those who have a disposable income may end up being able to, uh, to, 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 to get uh, items at a discount. And those who don't end up in a position where they can be uh, they possibly let go of these assets because the circumstances are difficult. Yeah, the Kiza says the opportunity for homeschooling. Yes, children are at home and we are still uncertain uh, how they will be able to go back. And this creates an opportunity. Now, homeschool doesn't mean you have to be a teacher, but if you know how to teach, this is an opportunity which has presented itself during this period. And there are people out there who are seizing those opportunities and they are working with them and they are seeing how they can be able to move on. Uh, tax planning uh, as an incentive uh, for, 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 for trade, yes. Uh, uh, John is a professional accountant and uh, taxes are one of those things which have affected and are really affecting a number of people. And it is for that reason that there is an opportunity which has uh, been created by that. Um, yeah, uh, James talks about opportunity to make face pass by tailors for community members. Yes, a mask is uh, part of our fashion statement today. That's an opportunity which has presented itself and there are people who are seizing uh, those opportunities. Yeah, I, I'm waiting for a couple of more comments as we just wait for everyone to join in the call and then we will be able uh, to start. Uh, that's another opportunity which has presented itself. Uh, one of the things which I think is interesting is that as entrepreneurs, we find that periods like this open our eyes up to many opportunities which we possibly uh, had not picked before. One of the things which is critical as we walk the journey of business is to notice that it is usually during times of crisis that the antennas of the entrepreneur are highest. That is when the entrepreneur is thinking uh, sharpest because times are tough. If you're a school owner, the school has been closed, you have to be at your sharpest. So uh, it appears that crisis causes our antennas to be sharper than they have uh, ever been. Uh, opportunity to sell. My sweaters online. Yes, you may have been saying I have to have a physical store, but now there is, uh, you don't have that luxury. So you have had to get on to, uh, you have had to find a way of selling your, uh, your, your, your sweaters online. Uh, ah, yes, acquired land, prime land, less competitive because the purchasing power was, uh, emotionally affected negatively. Yes, I mean, the truth is that a number of assets have heavily discounted during this period. And one of the reasons why they have been heavily discounted is because, uh, I mean, people are distressed. And a number of us, you find we don't have a strong emergency fund. And that means that you have to release assets, sometimes at a not so good price, uh, because of the challenge which 
uh, which you're facing, and that presents someone else with an opportunity. That person who has uh, no, uh, that person who has no money, rather, the person who has a bit of disposable income during this period, has managed to pick uh, an asset or two as a result of this uh, situation. Yeah. So. Uh, Great. So, uh, the, the possibly one from, uh, yes, Rachel says, uh, leverage technology to advertise business. Yes, uh, we have noticed that the markets can be looked at very differently. Uh, there has been an increased acceptance of online businesses uh, because many people didn't uh, trust you if you said you are selling flowers online. But we don't. We haven't had a choice for the last two years, and now that it means that people are more accepted in that business. And so there, there are opportunities for startups in that area. Uh, uh, stocking of medical supplies, which help my clinic, yes, uh, so that you are not affected by the transport bans. So that you're not affected by the transport bans, that is a, a good one. Uh, so that you're not affected by the transport bans, that's a good one. That's something which is uh, which is powerful. So you find that all of us are doing business uh, a bit differently as a result of the circumstances in which we are. And that's why we are having this session today. We are saying that as entrepreneurs, we don't have a choice. We have to be able to see the opportunity which is presented by these circumstances. And then we can be able to move. We can be able to take this to the next, to the next step. So that's largely where we are coming from. And that's kind of the basis of our session today. All right, great. So that that, that uh, sorry, I dropped off a minute there. That is where we are today, and that's the opportunity which we want to be able to discuss. Now, what we are going to try and do uh, in the session today, we're just uh, holding on for Mr. Musoke to join, and he will he will take us through. But I will start off by highlighting just a couple of ideas as we begin our session. I want to just highlight a couple of ideas. I want to simply paint a picture of what exact game are we playing when we look at uh, opportunity during a time like this. And I'll just share a couple of ideas and then we will get into our uh, session. When we think about opportunity during uncertain times, Really what we are saying is that the times are such that no one knows clearly whether the rules which we have lived by, we can be able to continue living by. And that is really what we are trying to do. How do you operate during times like this when the rules which you thought were the rules you live by have actually changed. So I'll just uh, share my screen for a minute and, and simply uh, paint a picture for us about the, the, the period in which we are. So we are saying, what, what are the opportunities during uncertain times? What, uh, what are we seeing during times that are uncertain? Now, I like this quote, and uh, this is uh, this was uh, shared by uh, John Kennedy and Yajun that the word crisis in Chinese is made up of two characters. 
one represents danger and the other represents opportunity. Every time you hear the word crisis, it means two things. It means there is danger. It means there is opportunity. It means that this crisis could take you. It also means that this crisis could actually make you. That is what it means. That is the game which we are playing. Hello. All right. Uh, great. Thank you. I think I think that is mm. okay. Yes, I'm in. Okay, super. I can I can hear you. That that, that, that that's good. So we uh, I'll just invite you to share in just a moment. So that's what crisis means. That it means opportunity, and it also means danger. And as we listen to uh, Mr. Musoke today, as he shares, Mr. Musoke is. Um, is the is the chairman of Casita. He has spent the better part of the last uh, 15 to 20 years running various businesses. He has interests in uh, edu in the education sector. He will tell us about that. He has interests in uh, in uh, in uh, in the trade business. Uh, he also has interests in media, and he comes to us to just share. How do we find opportunity during the time of crisis? Because the times we are in are unprecedented. There is a lot of talk of the help which is coming, but we do know that it's going to take time for this help to come and actually reach to us. And that is where we are coming from. So uh, we, we want to sit together and ask, well, this is where we are now. And we are hoping that we can be able to work together, we can be able to win together, we can be able to work out of this strongly. So without uh, uh, taking any more time, I'm going to invite uh, Mr. Musoke, who will introduce himself, and he will share with us how do we find opportunity during the time of crisis. Uh, Mr. Musoke, over to you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Musoke Thaddeus. Uh, Chairman Kasita, Uganda. I'm so privileged to have this opportunity to share with you, comrades, because meeting with such strategies, they are very vital uh, and even they're very, very, very important uh, since uh, we are in a very uh, critical situation of COVID-19, where exactly we we need to find opportunities. Like our main uh, topic of today, capturing opportunity, opportunity in crisis. Uh, personally, we have been like uh, the moderator, the host. We have tried to to, to venture in different uh, business opportunities, uh, mainly like using the strategy of diversification. And uh, you find that even if you diversify. Uh, it creates opportunities, but when a crisis like COVID comes, uh, you find that uh, it may not spare you if you don't, you don't as an entrepreneur, uh, focus, uh, think a lot, because you find that uh, a lot needs to be done. Uh, for instance, uh, when we first had uh, the lockdown, you find that most of the people thought that ah, this is going just to take two two weeks, uh, uh, but when this time the president partially locked the inter-district movement, people knew ah the man started like that urgently. They had to run back to the villages. So, how do you capture? Let me go there. Like, how do you capture opportunities in crisis? Uh, this is a very very vital topic and very important at this uh, situation uh, because I know it will help so many people to see how can I identify opportunities. Uh, so like mainly entrepreneurs, we utilize 
is the problems or challenges of people or the need. And we see how do we solve these problems at, with the profit because you need to survive. And so when COVID came, it created a lot, a lot, many, 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 many challenges. Uh, so for instance, financial crisis. Most of the people are saying now, even we cannot buy food, we cannot buy, we cannot meet our obligations. And uh, you find that sincerely, it was a very challenging situation. So what can someone do? Instead of lamenting, you know, yes, I was working as a teacher at school. Now <laughs> the school is closed. Should I go on just begging, begging food? But when you hear to lead to radio, people were saying, now our people are home, our kids are home. Uh, they are going to be affected morally because school has closed. So any, any, anyone who could know that now there is a problem, the kid at home needs assistance, a professional assistance. So I don't know. Identifying an opportunity is something which is very, very simple. Just just imagine that you're a teacher, you have lost your job, but you are just sitting there, you are listening to radio, <laughs> and then your parent is lamenting. Hey, hey, these kids need assistance when they're home. Now you see they're going to be affected academic-wise. So the, the faster teachers, all the clever teachers, what they did, it was, can we try and formulate holiday work? Can I contact these parents? And I give them assistance by providing holiday work. It's brought back. I, I mark. Then I get something for survival. So it's, it's very, very, very important. Uh, for instance, a crisis when it's to happen, it comes as uncertainty. In management, um, anyone you are able, there are issues which you can control and those which are beyond your control. Just know that the business was moving on very smoothly. Now the president announces the lockdown. <laughs> so you need to sit down, settle, utilize your brains, give them tasks. I remember when I was at university, I used to query with uh, our, our lecturers, why do you give us tough, tough, tough equations mainly? <laughs> in mathematical papers. And they told us, you know, this world is very simple, but it has so many challenges. In order to solve these challenges, test your brain. You are gifted by the brain which can find solutions. So we tried, we tried, we tried, you know, like when you have in papers and then with academics. But later we are able to pass because when you make your brains, when you task it with several assignments, for sure it will find solutions. But you, when you sit and you start lamenting, again, it will not find solutions. That's why, by the way, like uh, our friends who are in, in, in other countries, like let me give like, an example of Dubai, where the condition was so tough, like in European countries where the coldness also the climate was so tough. It tasked, it tasked them, why, what can we do? Because with challenges, it creates innovations. So that's why this case now, they invented essays when the coldness is too much. It can warm them. And then it was about purpose. Because even now in Dubai, where the temperature is so high, it could be so what? It, it could it could cool down the temperatures. So why should you utilize your brains with giving it several tasks to find solutions, to find possible opportunities? Because it will think, how will we survive? If this man doesn't at least be comfortable with the income, then we shall all die. 
So that's why, like the temperatures in European countries created opportunities for innovation, and then the essays were invented. For Dubai, again, it worked. So later, that is an opportunity. So I want to come back here in Uganda, mainly focusing on COVID-19. Just imagine you have been so busy, uh, you have been working. The other time I was given an example of a teacher. Just somehow discovered an opportunity of assisting a kid who is at home by organizing the home packages uh, in order to make these kids not backslide with academics. Others went further to try online lessons. And even some were using WhatsApp if, if someone is not well conversant with uh, Zoom. So I leave that alone. Just to the teacher, you had them others inviting you to small businesses, what and what. Let us leave that alone. Now, you are an accountant. You are an accountant, you are at home. Totally the company has closed, they say, you know, now we are downsizing for survival. So how can you find opportunities as an accountant? So you, you just imagine to, with, during this uh, just uh, finished lockdown, you are able to say, now we need returns. People are saying now, how, how will I access this company when it's closed? So when the company is closed, the office are closed, but 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 he needs to to to, to submit the returns to URA. So how can you identify them? If you had the chance and you are working in accounting for some of the time, and you had direct contact to some of the clients easily. You can contact them although there is an emergency. If you don't submit your returns, you know you are going, you are going to be penalized by URA. So you know you try to find opportunities by solving challenges caused by the crisis. Another scenario is like you know when. Uh, this COVID came because now in Uganda, COVID is one of the worst crises we have faced. A lot, a lot had to change. When we are in meetings of finding solutions, how we can mitigate the challenges of COVID, where businesses are collapsing, I was shocked that the government didn't have any solutions. I told them now, just imagine the bars are closing. If the bars are closing, these people, they are incurring rent areas. If someone access the loan, is accumulating. Secondly, even the money which he had is going to be spent. So anyone who didn't sit down and the task and the task the brains. How can we, you know, at times in better management uh, terms, you can say forecasting. You think ahead. Unless when you are myopic, that's where the challenges may become harder. But when you think ahead, it's like tasking your brains to see sincerely. If this bar has closed, how am I going to survive? Then, what can I do? Because I need money. So if you want just that cheap, cheap, cheap money, then you go into illegal activities. But the people who are operating bars and they had to task their heads, had to task their brains, it's like carrying out small consultations or small research. They were able to transform the bars into mini supermarkets, where already the stock is there. Some for, for the beers, for the sodas and the water. And then you add some, you add some eatables, which can consumables, which can be used at home. And then even someone could put small two to two chairs when you sit 
how will someone in, uh, arrest you that you're operating a bar when it's a small supermarket? Someone has bought a Kabia, is taking it. And then <laughs> life moves on. So those people who didn't make, who didn't forecast, who didn't consult, who didn't, who didn't, who didn't engage like, like their colleagues, you find that now they will be lamenting now rent areas, rent areas, but this one already is generating something. Uh, and, and by some others went further. If you cannot transform a bar into a simple supermarket, others transformed into restaurants where you add something to someone who is cooking, like the restaurant department, and then the sodas will be utilized. So, and then he was solving a problem of where this is, where, where you can access food, good food. And then at times even some men don't want to overstart home because they will be asking, we need sugar, we need what, we need this. So someone is getting something. So you easily find opportunities by first forecasting is the same like taxing, uh, tax giving several tax to, to, you, to your brains, your head. And then where people do associate, like nowadays associations are doing a very vital role. Give a scenario of Casita, where we do provide free consultations to members because, okay, yes, you have tried to forecast, now you're stuck. Here you come to Casita and then you say, hello, Mr. Chair, I'm stuck. I'm trying to see what I can do, but it's like, I, I, I failed to, to figure out any possibilities which I can invest in or which I can try out for survival. So with Casita, we have several reports, several research projects, which someone can try out, basing on his abilities, basing on uh, his, uh, his, his financial status and others. Because it doesn't mean that when to start any new opportunity, you are supposed to have huge capital. No, basing on the research like associations, we do coordinate, we get reports from Uganda Investment Authority, which are well researched. So our members can easily access those researched projects and find opportunities. So that's another way where you can identify opportunities. So with associations, uh, like if now even in villages, uh, they have the small association with the villages where people meet, they brainstorm. I look at how are we going to survive now? What can I do? What are you doing there? Is there any opportunities? So with associating with different uh, stakeholders, with different friends, with different people, and uh, it can help you by the way, identify opportunities. And uh, then uh, through engagements, it's like sometimes when, when, when uh, I go to the bank, it doesn't mean that I'm going just to go and pay or deposit the money in the bank. And then I just move. So when I go to the bank, I try to create a conversation with the, with the bank, a bank employee, or a teller person working, uh, working. And then through that conversation, you try to digest, like what are the challenges you are finding here? Like mainly in the banks, what I've discovered, since the banks down, downsized, this people overwork and even they fail to get time for lunch. So I discovered that there is an opportunity where someone you can cook food from home, you come and you start, <laughs> and you start distributing food to these to this, to this bank employees. So you can easily, when you engage someone, you can easily find 
they are problems. <laughs> so their problems are opportunities. Another another challenge is like when COVID strike to Uganda, it was that we rushed that you're supposed to buy a mask, you're supposed, uh, you're supposed to wash your hands. So anyone who could stop soap, who could stop, uh, who could stock sanitizers, who could stock masks, he was making a lot of money. Yes, yeah, so when I want to give this scenario, when the other first uh, lockdown ended, I got a gentleman who had imported a lot of so many masks. So he thought COVID had gone. Uh, but I said, no, when we are opening and we are engaging the science team, uh, when bargaining for the business community to be allowed to operate, they told us, you know, they are waves. And then you never know when, when the population doesn't follow standard operation procedures, you may get the second lockdown or second wave. So I bought these masks at a very, very cheap price. I stocked them. So during uh, this uh, second wave, I've been able to seriously sell these masks. So, but I got, I, did, I discovered that opportunity when we are engaging, when we are engaging the science team. So through that engagement, we are just pursuing them. Please let our business community operate as we comply with SOPs. But through that engagement, I discovered, hey, there is this opportunity. <laughs> opportunity. <laughs> so in any crisis, there is an opportunity. Uh, I'm forgetting the name, but there is this lady. Uh, let Lord rest her in peace. She has just died of COVID. She started the funeral service uh, services in Uganda. And uh, people wondered, how can someone venture into <laughs> funeral services? But she was generating a lot of money. Because you know that when you are sending off your loved one, you can send him or her in a more decent way which is more respectful because that's the last ceremony on earth. So I thought, mm, I think we can advance. But even her coming up with that innovation and the late husband, she was abroad. So she had traveled, maybe I can't recall so well, but I think she was on jail. So when she was on jail and I identified, oh, these people, this is how they carry out the burial ceremonies. I think I can try it at home. So we didn't, when she came back, she had to utilize that opportunity, but she identified that opportunity when she was abroad. So even traveling, traveling helps you to know what is being done. What, how do these people behave? What opportunities are this side? Can, I, can it be of relevance back at my home country? So also that's the way we can identify opportunities. So whenever you are in crisis, don't just keep on lamenting. They are safe for opportunities. And then like uh, during this, when we had just started the, the lockdown, the second lockdown, unfortunately, we got several relatives uh, who uh, who got COVID. And then we are spending a lot. You know, you need to help your colleague, you need to help your family member uh, to see that he can be alive. So the hospitals had to seriously <laughs> increase the, the cost of treatment because they easily identified the demand so in crisis, they knew that there is serious demand for providing quality medical services. So others started up. I have a colleague, when he saw several ambulances moving around, he said, hey, 
it was a, he had the pharmacy so now he added on a medical facility and now it's moving on it's moving on uh we had a scenario at one of the hospitals because this is normal people were complaining on private hospitals like uh, one of my relatives so close my mother she was admitted at victoria hospital the first time we reached the victoria hospital they asked us for four millions before doing before carrying out any treatment and later when she was admitted at ICU, almost we are spending four millions to five a day. So almost we we spent uh, like over eighty millions on medical bills. So when we are at her barrio, I was I was in the village seeing people suffering because of COVID nineteen. They could not access. They could not access proper medical services. So we are on our barrier. But I was able to identify an opportunity that around our locality here, when I start up a medical service, and in the memory of my late mother, and uh, in conjunction with our family members, we can easily, we can easily solve the problem. Our friends in the village who cannot afford expensive hospitals, and then I, I, I impact them because that's where we grew from. So currently, I'm in final. We are in final stages of finishing the establishment of that medical facilities. But I was mourning the death of my late mother. But again, I was able to identify an opportunity. So unless someone, when any challenge comes or when crisis happens or strikes, if you don't take time and analyze intensively, intensively that crisis, then you won't be able to know the opportunities. But another simple way, it could be like this. In mainly in management, we, emph we emphasize SWOT analysis as a tool in management it can put that crisis on a weighing scale. So when you put that crisis on a weighing scale, you know, yes, what has it created? How has it impacted me? Now, as an entrepreneur, you can ask yourself, how can I benefit from this crisis? <laughs> so when you know that you can you are if you ask those you can easily know the strength the opportunities the challenges then uh, uh, and the possible solutions so with that the SWOT analysis to a certain extent it can easily help you also find opportunities so ladies and gentlemen, in any occurrence, there are opportunities. I want to give another scenario that uh, when the taxes were stopped from operation during COVID-19, most of them packed them. But someone who went back home gave it a second thought. He found an opportunity in that. For instance, some tax drivers changed the tax vans into delivery vans. I was moving around Mukono 
then I discovered someone that had rebranded, but on top he forgot to remove the coward taxi. He had rebranded using the words Tukugondezamu, that they simplify whatever you need. So they could do home deliveries. So they carried out home deliveries uh, that you find, you find like now, like in, during the lockdown, yes, some supermarkets we are working, but people found the challenge of traveling. The border borders were stopped. The taxis were stopped. Uh, private cars were stopped. So, some tax drivers analyzed these presidential directives and found opportunities. And they were generating very great profits. Because just imagine, he goes to the market, he purchases, and then he delivers. But before he had to move around and get customers, so you give an order that I want, uh, I want some sugar, I want some posho, I want some bananas or meat. So he writes. It's like almost creating a mobile retail shop or a mobile supermarket. So you could deliver. He goes to the village and surprises several, several homesteads. But when I was engaging that gentleman, I told him, how did you come up with such and with such an innovation. He told me that your know, taxes consume less fuel. Since they consume less fuel, he knew that when I pack this tax, well, after removing the seeds, it can be able to supply many possible customers. In one way or the other, it reduces operation costs and while stabilizing his income. And the others who didn't have a second thought and trying to find opportunities, we are home saying, hello, we are dying. How I wish Yaja gives us posho and beans. Posho and beans. And so when they started giving out food, just to know it's very hard for the government to help you meet your obligations. You know what shocked me? I'm sorry to take you to this. That to show that, that the government cannot meet, help you meet your obligations, the president was requesting us, please be very economical with what the government has given you. Try as possible to portion that portion so that it takes you for some good time. So it shows that even the posho, which is one of the cheapest foods on the market, it was becoming a problem to be provided by the government. So when you think about something free of charge from the government, then that one, it will hinder tasking your brains, finding opportunities, finding, sharing with your colleagues, sharing with your colleagues, because even when you share, okay, you have touched your brains, you are stuck, whatever you think about, you think, uh, I cannot manage. Then you can engage your colleague. Analysts, whether you know, you know, with human behavior, I know some of your colleagues have ever attended lessons and course, course works, uh, course units where they intensively uh, analyze human behavior. When you associate with people who cannot add value on you. So just imagine if the tax driver I was giving an example was associating with a colleague who was thinking that you better pack that taxi at home <laughs> and just relax. So you could be discouraged and identifying opportunities, you will be able to take risks. So in order the risks, not to, to discourage you, you need to see how do you mitigate the risks to make sure that the opportunities can yield very, 
fruitful results. So ladies and gentlemen, with opportunities, everywhere there are opportunities. Everywhere there are opportunities, it's just a matter of time to see that, how can I do it? Option, another question is, how can I survive? Yes, how can I survive? I'm home, I'm not earning anything. When I ask Musoke money, will say I'm bad it off. How will I survive? Just take some few minutes, try to reflect. It's like in life, reflecting is very, very vital. When you reflect, it can easily task your brains. It can easily give you solutions. It can give you alternatives. And you can survive. Nothing, I'm a member of the Hash Athletic Group. Is an international group uh, which brings together different uh, different corporates. Uh, but uh, what I discovered uh, this, I want to use it as an example. Like before, I explained about association. How who you associate with? Who is your friend? Who do you always move with? This is what brings them together is jogging. In a week, we jog like three times. Doing, we have different occupations, other businessmen, other in government, their agencies, what, what, and others, other farmers. So, what brings us together is running. And why did this group think that running is very vital? Because it keeps our bodies healthy. So when your body is healthy, it avoids these funny, funny illnesses, chronic diseases. But when you go in that group and you just concentrate on running, you remove out of those, ah, I am very fit nowadays. I am very fit. But others will find as an opportunity that all of these members. Now let me give an example. This is what we call the mango wing, hash wing, or bukoto wing. At times it is central wing, or mukono wing. It makes these people associate the list. It can be around fifty members or one hundred per run. But this is after running, they need water. After running, they need fruits. <laughs> they take sugar cane, watermelon, you know, they're healthy for their body. So someone was seeing us by them every evening after running. He told me, you guys, I'm a farmer. All oh, these, I have them in my garden. <laughs> so he said, but you gentlemen, <laughs> you are not serious. This is an opportunity. Please utilize it. So currently, he comes, he drives his car, he avoids the expenses of fuel because now he's like supplying us. The cost of fuel for coming to run is added on the cost of the fruits, just through association. And then there is another one. For him, he deals in snacks you know, in these homemade products. And then in the evening, he comes in and he says, oh, look, are you taking, are you taking, are you taking? <laughs> he has come to maintain this fitness and then making money. Then others have started up, because now the bars are closed, some others started up restaurants. So he says, oh, you come and run from my restaurant. So we start from there. And then as you are there, you buy a soda. <laughs> you buy some water. So I think uh, in every situation, sincere Mr. Bukasa and colleagues in this session, there are opportunities. So it's just a matter of taking time, 
intensively analyze challenges, opportunities are everywhere. I've given several examples in order to help us, in order to help us change our perception. What at times affects us not to find solutions or opportunities, our poor perceptions. And at high at times, even it hinders to have to have effective forecasting. So if you fail to effectively forecast, then how will you find opportunities? So let us think ahead. Let us see how do we find solutions. Let us see how do we survive. Uh, I want to give this as an example. I'm sorry to say this, but uh, you know it helps us understand more. I'm going to be more practical. I've given the fact that uh, with these sessions we need to have more practical examples and a more simplified way. I, I had this scenario where most of the musicians I had to go. I don't want to sound political, but it's like these colleagues of ours, they are a little bit desperate. Then if they're desperate, they need to survive. So they feel like, you know, where I was earning my music career now is off. How will I generate money? I have to get something from where wealth creation packages. But yes, they cannot have concerns, but they are getting opportunities in this crisis. First, because again, people still need entertainment. People still need entertainment. What opportunities can be there during even this crisis? You can release the songs, release the songs. You can open YouTube channels, people can earn something. You can sell your music albums to different individuals. You can make adverts. Adverts, I've seen Spice Diana seriously marketing. Uh, this water now is called Spice. Yes, you can get, you can promote brands. Uh, and then uh, sometimes makes the small videos. Marketing, or ma marketing, is it fresh there? I don't know something, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I can't recall so well. But so the opportunity is you're a musician, you have a brand, you can utilize it. Don't just be myopic and you think about concerts only. Yes, so that you can get money, you can be brand ambassador, you can be a very good marketeer for a brand. Just know that this gentleman is stuck. He thinks now when the concerts are done, how am I going to survive? But he knows that I'm okay. He needs to market his brand. This is okay, he's making juice. How can he sell? Okay, Mr. Musoke is having a boutique. How can I market his boutique? So we need to make sure that at least we test our brains, we do carrot research, and information in this is very vital because as you utilize opportunities, you need to know that the legality. Uh, yes, uh, being in the, the legal framework is very vital. Uh, and then uh, the culture is don't format something which can be against the culture uh, because it won't be supported. You need to have the region's aspect. Now, like when, when uh, let me give an example like of Ndeva. Ndeva, most of the population now, uh, they are Muslims. Now you go around in here and then you say, ah, ah, these people need pork and you put there. They <laughs> stole for pork. <laughs> so also, <laughs> you may find issues there. Uh, another thing I want to give an, an example, like for, for the school. Uh, at times I was still a young guy when I was still schooling. I remember when I started in Pomario College, I was still at Makere University. And I could move around our area, Poma, Poma, so Mukono. 
And I saw that the schools which are there were so expensive. And then the government, the government schools, you find that their services somehow, somewhere, they are still lacking. And then we had a lot, a, a bigger piece of land for the family piece of land. And with this, before I, I, I joined university, I could have more time to take care of that land into serious farming. So when I joined university, a lot was being done to this land. So this land is idle. This land is idle. I think we can do something. So I had a challenge. Now, how am I going to get capital? <laughs> how am I going to start? So there was like a funny, funny, funny cabinet. So I said, I think I can start small even with this. Luckily enough, we started and then we went on expanding. Now it's one of the best schools in East Africa. So I think let our minds, let our perceptions be negatively affected even by lack of capital. There are many opportunities we can use without capital. There are very many opportunities. You can start small. Yes, when even don't think about bigger, big opportunities. If you have challenges with capital, you can you can start big. No, you can start small. But if you have if you have money, if you have capital, or the other sources of capital, then you'll have several opportunities. Like those people who have who had some money during the lockdown. Uh, people wanted to make their obligations. We are selling off properties at a very, very cheap price. And I have a colleague who bought over 20, 20 border borders at a very, very good price during the lockdown. And then he was reselling them after the lockdown at a very high price because now importation was becoming a problem and a serious challenge. And the demand was now high because people were starting to operate. But before someone was seeing a border border, it's not bringing anything. It's not, uh, you know, you are, it was used that at least every week I would get something like 70 or 100, depends on the argument he had with the rider. So some people were selling off. The same, it applies to land. He says, now I have land, but I need, I need to, to cater for my family. No, I'm not earning anything. It's like, it's, uh, 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 this one, uh, at least 100 to 100 to 50, at least I can sell. Oh, 100 to 100. Plot. He, they were selling at a very different prices. So others were making money through crisis. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think with that, Mr. Mukasa. All right. Uh, uh, that, that, that's my that's my presentation. I submit, sir. I would request I, more, maybe some questions uh, where exactly. yeah, from from our colleagues. All right. Uh, thanks a lot, Mr. Musoke, for that submission. It was. Uh, uh, thanks. Thanks a lot for that submission. Uh, I. Uh, I think I think there is quite a bit which uh, we have all managed to pick. A couple of people asked that they want to see your face, so I'll ask that as you answer the question, you turn on your video so that people can be able to see who you are. We wanted a better connectivity, so we decided to we decided to uh, to, to to keep the video off. But I think at this moment we are going to get into uh, into 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 a process of uh, just answering questions. I think Mr. Musoke touched on a couple of things. He talked about the importance of identifying a problem and solving it, and he made it clear that there is an abundance of problems wherever you look. There is a there, there is a, there is an abundance of problems. I thought it was powerful that even in the loss of your mother, Mr. Musoke, there is an opportunity you saw in that in that in that in that in that in that very painful uh, process, but you managed to see an opportunity in there and, and follow up on it. He talked about the need for networks, the people you are talking to, 
uh, this time also, I think the first question you will answer has already been asked about how do how does someone wants to join Casita join? They want to be part of your network. They want to be able to join. How do I join Casita? That's something which I think you talk about as you answer your question. I'll ask that all of us who have questions, you put up your hand. I will. Uh, I'll give you an opportunity to speak. If you prefer, you could uh, put your question in the chat box, and we'll be able to answer it at that point. Um, so you can put in the chat box, so you put up your hand and you want to make a comment or to say something, and then we can be able to give you that. You talked about the fact that uh, there is uh, the, 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 the times of crisis treat some people uh, very hard, but create opportunities for others. I thought the border border man who bought border borders at a discount and was able to sell them at, uh, at, 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 at a profit. Those are the things which are right near you. So we don't know specifically what you're going through as an individual, but possibly there is an opportunity out there which is, uh, we, we, which, which, which is, uh, which is out for you for the taking. So I, I, I will ask that if we have any questions, please just put up your hand. Uh, if, uh, or you can just post the question in the, in the, in the box, in the, in the box. I'll ask the, the few which I have received. Uh, for now, uh, Mr. Musoke, I'll ask that uh, Rachel wants to know how she can become a member, a registered member of uh, of Casita. Uh, uh, what what requirements are there, and possibly what what does she benefit from joining this network? You can just share that, and then we can receive the rest of the question. Um, uh, Mr. Musoka, I think you are muted, eh? Oh, sorry. Yes, yes. So uh, you can just get answer that. Uh, okay, thank you, Rachel. Uh, thank you for taking interest to join Casita. Uh, because Casita provides several, several services and then avails several opportunities to our members. Uh, joining, just if you are interested in two business, uh, they that's the, the, main, the main issue with many for, for consider. And then you pay an annual membership fee. It ranges uh, from 75 to 100,000, uh, but given different categories. And then for corporate companies, also they can become members of Casita. For them, they range from 500 to 2 million. Uh, and then what services do we provide? Like before, I told you that we have free consultation services. Consult, you can consult. Uh, then we have legal services. We have mediation services. Then we have business opportunities. We have business opportunities. Uh, we have which include marketing. We can get business partners. Uh, we have we have our Casita Bank, uh, which can avail cheaper capital. It can boost saving for your businesses. It helps with networking. Uh, it helps with, uh, with simple trainings. It helps you strengthen your relationship with National Bureau of Standards. It helps you to strengthen relations with Uganda Revenue Authority and all the solidities, all, all the necessary information about URA. Since we have several partners, anyone who is in business as known and is not a member of Casita, then you are missing a lot. Uh, so anyone who needs to join Casita, our website is very active and we are modifying it, where it can be used for marketing purposes. You can open an account, but soon, soon, soon you'll be able to open your account and sell your products because we need to seriously utilize the digital era. We need to seriously go e-commerce because that's the way to go now. <laughs> we need to be universal. That's the trade now because of COVID-19. So those are some of, the, some of the opportunities which of people are used to lazy. So you find that some people who are saying that, you know, you know, rent, 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 rent issues, the cost of rent is so high. So with e-commerce, 
You're avoiding the rent. <laughs> you're avoiding the rent. And currently in Uganda, even you don't need a license, but you know, as time goes on, I think the license will be seriously considered. So, Rachel, I think I've answered. Thank you. Uh, thanks, th thanks a lot, uh, Mr. Musoke. I will hand over the mic to uh, to uh, Henry Ntaro. You will uh, you will share with us, and then we will hear from Elvis. Henry. Henry, are you there? Huh? Hello? Yes, Henry. Sorry, you had not unmuted me. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Musoke and Mr. Mkasa. Uh, I've shared most of my comments, I think, in the chat. Uh, uh, I would just like to add that uh, through these calamities, we should also use the chance to develop ourselves personally. Uh, how? It is a time to see where you're lacking in everything you're doing. It is a time to look out because also God speaks in silence. While the people are panicking, it's a time to look ahead and see, okay, how do I obtain these chances? For example, I, at the moment, I am distributing potatoes uh, using safe border or things like that. And these are things I had never thought of, okay? Mm. Someone can identify a market and say, okay, in this, this uh, residential area, what can I supply them? Even using the borders, the borders which were crying, that there's no job, safe border, there's global, there are so many avenues. So thank you for encouraging about, uh, and then also the point of starting with what you have. I like the point where it says, okay, we had land and I just want to put in, I could put a school, but it starts by seeing it, uh, have, having faith and, and, and knowing that it will happen. So he closed his eyes, he saw a school with that small building, he has built a school. So uh, thank you for those words of encouragement. And I would like to encourage others to always develop themselves personally, how either read the book or study something. Online courses are now cheaper. So by the time the lockdown is over, people come out with high qualifications and say, oh, what's happening? Uh, find a way to serve others and then uh, you will come out of these problems. And also through these tribulations, because if you don't suffer, you will not know joy. So when you're going through pain, there is hope that there is a, there's a future ahead. So look out for that opportunity and remember a child of God and go for it. Thank you very much, uh, members. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Henry, for the, that, uh, that feedback. I think you make it very clear to be able to see where you're going and uh, certainly also the, the question of, uh, and I think which is a critical one, uh, the question of, uh, not just uh, seeing, but making sure that you remember that you fully developing yourself into that person who can be able to, to get things done, to learn, and having an attitude to learn. One of the things which we are doing at Enterprise Uganda right now, we're going to continue with the recovery series. But what we want is for people to walk out of here when they are actually getting better. And that's it is in the association, I think, uh, uh, Mr. Musoke talked about the fact that just being in a group of people who are just even jogging together, but from different parts, uh, the associations which you are keeping, that can be able to help you get better. So you have to be deliberate about getting better, deliberate about uh, wanting to, to do better. Uh, uh, Elvis, do you want to say something? Elvis, Elvis, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm there. All right, uh, Elvis, you can go, please. Yeah, I wanted to thank very much, Mr. Musoke, for his presentation, and uh, we are all encouraged to think broader 
Uh, but as I, I texted there, I also did like the same. I, I was running a kindergarten before the COVID-19. Then uh, as you all know, it's closed and I, I encouraged the teachers. At first we did it together to go to homes and educate children. And then later uh, individuals did it. They could get parents and go and support their children. However, uh, some parents are like, now, since we have gone through it for a long time, they want to get proof or uh, that, that their children have been learning from home. When I consulted with the inspector of schools, she told me she doesn't know what to answer about that. Now, I was bringing it in the group. What do you think? Do you think parents deserve to get, like we are giving them service? and they want proof that we served them during the lockdown. Do you think it can work? All right, uh, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for that question, Elvis. I think it's a powerful one. Uh, people are finding ways of keeping their young people engaged as they are at school. And I'll ask Mr. Musoke to touch on that question just a bit and also possibly before he comes on, uh, I, I don't know, Paul, do you want to ask your question? Paul Buenje? Paul Buenje, you can ask your question and then Mr. Musoke will come on once. Uh, I will also make, a, uh, I'll, I'll hand over to Mr. Musoke once and then he can, he can answer that final um, group of questions and we wrap up the session today. So the, the first question is, learners, how do we prove that they are learning at home? And then, uh, uh, I don't know whether Paul is still on, but Paul's question, Mr. Musoke, was uh, how do we, how, how do, uh, uh, how, which other opportunities are there, especially for people without capital? I have nothing, I've run out, I have no job. How can I be able to, to start? Some two or three opportunities I can be able to seize beyond the ones which you have mentioned. I think, Elvis, one thing I'll touch on before I write, uh, Mr. Musoke to make his final remarks is the fact that uh, parents should know if the children are learning. They should be able to see that a child who couldn't read can, write, can now read. A child who was struggling with mathematics is, a bit, is better now. And I think the responsibility of the parents is to monitor that good. I think what you're talking about is a certificate and some things may surely not be fully in our control, in your control as a teacher. Uh, but I guess that if value is being given at home, it should be able to ref be reflected in the performance of the child. Mr. Musoke, I'll hand to you and then you take a minute or two to write, just answer those two questions and we'll bring this to a close. All right. It 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 would appear that uh, that uh, that that that, that uh, Mr. Busoka is, uh, is is experiencing a couple of connectivity issues, but the, the I think I think I think uh, Elvis, in response to your question, I guess for me, what is critical right now is for you to be able to give value to the child as they are at school. When they go back to school, that first test, some parents may demand that you give the children a test and mark it and they see their performance. That could be a good practical thing to give the children so that they can be able to be engaged. Uh, Hello? Mr. Musoke, yes. Uh, do you want yes. to comment on those? Yes, I, 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 need, I need to help Mr. Mukas about that. Mm -hmm. You know, like mainly it depends on how you design uh, these homework packages. Because you find now what schools have done, and even most of my schools, and given the fact and head, I'm the chairman of private schools in Mokono, we have that uniform group and system where the packages are clearly designed based on the syllabus. So it's like you're helping uh, this young one not to miss what he, what is supposed to cover when he's still at school, and after. You have questions which clearly try to, to examine this kid 
are we moving at the same page? And after those packages are corrected back to the teacher to mark. And then later corrections are made as someone is picking new packages. Uh, this system is picking up a lot in Mukono because you know the internet cost is high and even buying new sets when, when we are still in a partial lockdown. So the parents are preferring to this. So it helps the kid moving move, to move on the same pace, basing on the syllabus cover. So if the teacher or the coordinating school is the same school where the kid was going, it's very simple that what he was supposed to have missed, given the fact when we are meeting the National Planning Authority, their recommendation is they are going to have automatic promotion. So you want to go to any school and they question you now, uh -huh, what proof is that this kid is supposed to be promoted? That's what the government is planning. But the school are not in position now to provide the report, unless maybe otherwise we shall share with the colleagues if there is that special, that special assignment report which can be given out to these learners. But currently, it's not available. And then I want to briefly handle the issue of, of, of investments or opportunities without capital. Without capital, you know, at times you find that uh, you may find some little challenges, but again, there are opportunities. Let me give you an example. You think, uh, you one time I was at Cavendish University, uh, having and engaging some learners uh, who were uh, finalizing uh, journalism or mass communication. So they were worried for us, we, we look for jobs now, the radio stations and TVs are scarce. But when I told them, how many of you have cars? My friend, most of them had cars. I told them, let me check your phones. Hey, they have iPhones, they're very expensive, three millions. And then I told him, what's the problem with working at radio when you have like a small what? Like a small business. They told us the challenge is capital. <laughs> but already they are having unutilized items which you can sell off and start off. Like now having a phone of three millions, I can go down and then I have a techno you know, of 500. It's a smartphone. And then that one, I can use it to start like a small grocery shop. By then, our grocery shops are picking a lot because people are, they can easily access those commodities, even at credit. So those small local grocery shops in the villages, they are almost making giant supermarkets close. So when you analyze intensively, why would you meet Taskies, what? They are running out of business. Because just imagine me from Mukono driving to come to buy from Ushum. When from Seta, there are so many grocery shops. So they can easily be accessed. That's, uh, that's uh, my view. So you can sell off some of the properties which are not free, totally not so necessary. Like it's some TVs, you can sell a TV or fridge even now taking cold things is a problem. So you may just get issues with diabetes, pressure, what? They are telling us that Scold things are not anything. So that's another opportunity. And then I just imagine you were in the village and most of those guys are corporates, they have cars. What's wrong with going and talk to them and washing those cars? Now washing a car is costs around 10,000. If okay, someone has reduced someone, it can cost like 7,000. So it depends how do you interact in your community? In your community, you can easily, you start with the, the people around you. It's simple, you start with the people around you. It's so washing a car. Even someone will give you free water. Even will give you soap. So that's also another opportunity. Now maintaining compounds. Every week someone has to slash. So you can use your hands if you cannot afford the machine, a slashing machine. That's opportunity. Cleaning services commercial cleaning services, and now opportunities. Where you can, it depends on the level you have started. If you don't have capital, 
you can start as small as possible. There is a, there is a lady whom we helped to start a dry cleaner, but she started by moving around the neighborhood, collecting clothes and wash. So later she was being paid, but now she has a big establishment of dry cleaner. So I think uh, let us not be hindered by capital. Let us try as small as possible, even to find those simpler opportunities. I want to end with this. I just give a scenario that in your, in your locality or village, everyone needs sugar, everyone needs some, some, some communities to use at home. But can you imagine that person is going to drive a car and use like 10,000 for fuel? Just, just create that home delivery services. By going to, to, to your neighbor, you get an order. Even some will give you money. If you are trustworthy, they will give you money. So use their money. You buy, you get your commission, your profit, and then your customer is contented. Uh, for, for groceries and supermarkets, if you have a good relationship or reputation in your, with your population, Nowadays, these corporate companies, they do deliveries. They give those commodities at credit. It's a matter of making very faithful and trustworthy that after selling, you pay, you pay. I had a project, Mr. Mukasa, whereby I was helping people access uh, stock. And when I find your shop, you don't have capital. I give you phones on credit. I give you CCTV camera, decoders, TVs. Can you imagine after someone taking a stock of like five millions. He doesn't want to, 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 to pay. You find him in a certain building trying to hide, <laughs> to bypass your show, to go and use your money to buy from someone else, even who cannot give him credit. So we have a challenge <laughs> with, some, with some colleagues, but uh, that's no more. It's just a matter of changing our perception. Briefly, I think uh, those are the simple the simple examples, but with Gasita, we have several well searched projects which someone can try out. All right. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Mr. Musoke, for that submission. I hope that has been helpful. Uh, yeah, I, I, we, we want to bring this to a close. We usually want to end by 10 30. We, uh, we, have, we are five uh, minutes beyond, but we want to thank everyone who has shared. Uh, we will be sharing next week on Thursday at this point. We will have another session. We are hoping we will hear about uh, indebtedness from Mr. Chichi. That is something which we will, we will communicate uh, through the messages. We ask that you invite other people uh, to the session. And we also request that you keep giving us feedback. Some people are uh, requesting that we can change the timing a bit, possibly to the evening. That's something we will think about and uh, and consider. Uh, possibly we may have two sessions, one uh, for the people who can do at this time and another for people who would prefer the evenings. But we want to keep improving this. So thanks a lot for your time. Uh, we request you to still put in your calendars uh, next Thursday at exactly this time. Uh, 9 to 10.30, we will be able to uh, have our next session. But keep engaging. I, I encourage you to certainly consider uh, getting into the... Uh, you are now part of the Enterprise Uganda family. We are, part, we are partners with Casita, and uh, we also want you to engage with the Casita family. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Musoke, I don't know if, if, if we could share your contact in the chat box so that people who want to get in touch can be able to get in touch with you uh, to be able to kind of keep this going. Yes, so uh, Millie, yes, uh, the sessions happen every Thursday at 9 o'clock to 10.30. Uh, we, we, we have sessions from different people, from different uh, partners, and uh, we, simply, uh, we simply want to keep hearing from you. Usually at the end of every session, I, I request that you post 
a topic which you think you want us to talk about, uh, which you want to hear about, uh, we got feedback from you. Please just post and say, I want to hear more about this topic. Last week we talked about mindset. This week we have talked about opportunity. Uh, we next week we should be talking about possibly indebtedness. Uh, people are going and how we manage our finances during this period. But there will be a diverse array of topics that we will talk about. So please just uh, post a topic you want to hear, and we will be able to capture that, and our team will be able to select how we will be able to move. Once again, a big thank you to all of you for the opportunity you have uh, given us to come and share today. We are very grateful that you have taken time to join. Uh, Mr. Musoke has shared his contacts there in the chat room. Uh, please do capture them and, uh, and, and you can engage with him. You can give him a call. Uh, I don't know whether our CEO is on call today. Um, I, I'm not very sure whether he was on the call. But uh, you can just engage with uh, Mr. Musoke and uh, kind of join the join the network. Uh, a lot of entrepreneurship is just being in the right network and being able to push. Uh, yes, Millie, we have seen the topic there. Uh, some people are saying about how do we manage stuff during these hard times, uh, issues of taxation management. That's something which has come up where capital can come from, sources of capital during this period. That's a powerful one. Yes, Stella, we've also picked that up. Uh, yes, so that, that we, are, we are picking up the topics. Other than that, a big thank you. Thanks for everyone who has joined. And uh, let's keep going. Let's not lose, um, lose heart. We need to keep pushing. This, these times like this are what actually make an entrepreneur it is exactly times like this that create us as entrepreneurs so let's just keep pushing let's just keep going and uh, make sure that we pull and we we get the best out of uh, this period one thing we are certain about is that even this will pass even this time will pass and that's uh, possibly the the quote which i'll leave with all of you uh, I'll keep the meeting open so that people can be able to, to, people can be able to uh, post the topics they want to see. Please keep posting them, but feel free to leave at, uh, at leisure. Uh, but one thing we can say for with certainty is that we do know that even this, this period here, this tough period which we are going through, it will come to an end. And when it does, uh, we will be able to work together and work out of these challenging times. So thanks a lot and have a lovely rest of the week.